<laughs> wow, attention to detail, Fletcher. Happy I like New that. Year. I like it. <laughs> what did you say, Fletcher? Got new glasses over here, Aaron. Yeah, oh. I, f I feel like a nerd, you know. Um, oh, no. <laughs> give me a compliment. Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to make you co host as well, Jen. I think it's fair to say, Aaron, if you're a nerd, you're in good company. <laughs> At least for me. <laughs> it's, yeah, all around compliment for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Amherst Conservation Commission meeting, January 12th, 2022, first of the new calendar year. Um, we have a pretty short agenda tonight, although there are some odds and ends um, that Aaron has to catch us up on. So hopefully we can move through things quickly. Um, thank you, Leroy, for running the last meeting before um, the holidays. And it sounds like we have Laura doing CPAC for us. So that's great. <laughs> um, I don't have any other comments. Dave, do you have any updates or input for us? I'm sure just a couple of quick updates. <clears throat> we are, um, thanks to Stephanie Ciccarello with some input from Aaron and Brad, we're wrapping up the um, uh, Robert Frost Trail grant with the state. I think I mentioned this last time, it's so much paperwork for a $30,000 grant. I don't think I'll ever do one of these again, but the bottom line is Brad and his his uh, limited crew did get a lot done. There's a lot of new boardwalks and, you know, all uh, permitted through the commission. So that work is is done for the season and the grant is done and we'll get our $30,000 re, uh, reimbursement. Um, I mentioned new trucks. We were finally, after years and years of advocating, we did get uh, the capital funding for new trucks. One of them is here um, and we we're very lucky to get this one. Um, I think I think we have both on order, but given the backlog of of vehicles in the in the country and probably in the world, um, we're very lucky to get this. So those should be um, rolling out in the in the winter months and and into spring. I'm not sure when we're going to get the second one. Um, so that's exciting because the trucks. I think one of our trucks is 16 and one of them is 12. So they've they've been a lot of miles and done a lot of work. These are working trucks. They don't just move people around. So it's great to support Brad um, in that way. Um, the assistant land manager search is underway. Um, there is a committee set up already to make uh, make recommendations to me on, on who to hire for the assistant land manager. I think we have a robust response, as you can imagine. Um, good, you know, good, good candidates who want to work for the town in that role. So I'm excited to, to get a new assistant land manager on board probably at this point, middle of February. So it's a great time to train and, and get somebody acclimated uh, when we're not in the field season. We'll be doing a lot of project planning. I know Aaron and I have already been talking about projects for the, for the new year, bridges. Um, you know, um, I won't say this too loudly, but there, I actually have funding. I've kind of amassed some funding for the first time, maybe in my time with Amherst to really uh, make, make a dent in some of the backlog uh, of, of uh, deferred maintenance out there on some of our other bridges. So grants like the Robert Frost Trail grant and money from the Kestrel Trust is really important. And we're, we're thankful for that. And we've got capital money and CPA money and uh, we'll get going on that. Um, in terms of project planning, part of that would be of course for Hickory Ridge. We, um, we have two potential pots of money there for major trail work at Hickory Ridge. One is a CDBG funding uh, that we got recommended through the town manager to the state. And the other hopefully will be the CPAC funding that has already been recommended to the town council and hopefully will be approved in the spring. So in order to get going on those, we need to do notices of intent with you. So well, one or more, I'm not sure uh, at this point, but I'll be working with Aaron and Brad and some of the planning staff on those. So. Um, and I will wrap up with my my usual Hickory Ridge is close. Um, <laughs> you, know, you know, I know it's funny. I, yeah, I've, I've worked on these projects for so long, but I will say that I got the attorneys sent me this afternoon the closing documents and basically what we need to close. So um, I've never felt more confident that we will close uh, in the month of January. So I'm feeling good. And uh, we will soon take ownership of Hickory 
And then the real work begins is planning and a master plan and figuring out what parts of the project, what parts of the property are conserved, what parts of the property may be available for other uses um, that have been identified in some of the, uh, you know, the information sessions we've had. We're as, also you might, as you might guess, I keep on getting asked by people in my neighborhood about where it stands. Yeah. We will do a press release when, um, when the closing uh, occurs. I don't want to, you know, be, be that person who says it's happening, it's happening, and it doesn't. So once it, once we close and it's recorded, we'll do a press release. I was over there the other day, um, post snow, and a lot of people using it for cross country skiing, still hiking. So it's nice to see the public using it. So, so those are my quick updates. I think that's about it. Um, good time for project planning in January and February. Exciting. Thanks, Dave. Karen, did you have any items for your report or do you want to jump in? I would just love to jump into other business and um, I think it's going to be pretty smooth. Um, so three emergency certs um, were issued since the last meeting. Um, the first two, very simple. Um, two of them were were uh, trees, they're all hazard trees. Two of them were sick trees that were um, checked by an arborist and they needed to be removed because they were more than half rotted out on the inside and they were hanging over a roadway. And then the other were two small diameter um, dead trees that were um, near a roadway as well. So those um, were issued for the removals. And then the last one was 263 College Street. Um, which if you give me just one second to transition, I was there today. Um, they, so this one, it's kind of, it, um, this is another one of those, and I know we're revising the bylaw right now, but like, these are things that would fall under minor activities under Wetland Protection Act. Um, and so we're, I'm, I've been a little bit more flexible about handling it as an emergency certification. This was a shed um, that was an emergency sh uh, demo of a shed where the shed was basically caving in. Um, they filed a permit with the um, building inspector because they it was a safety hazard and they wanted to get it out of there. And so um, they filed as a, an emergency cert to remove this small shed. So, um, with that said, we basically would just need a motion to ratify each of the emergency certifications. I move to ratify the emergency certification for 36 The Hollow. Second. Voice vote, Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. And I'm an aye. I move keep. to ratify the emergency. Or we keep going? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, wait. I'll, I'll wait till we, we need, do we need to cover the rest of them? No, you're good, Michelle. Keep, yeah. keep going. Okay. I move to ratify emergency certification for 106 Pelham Road. Second. Okay. I have a Whoa, second. It's like Jeopardy. Leroy, <laughs> voice vote, Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. And I'm aye. We're not fighting against Anna. Getting in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my turn. I'll ratify uh, 263 College Street, the demolition of a hazard. Oh, wait, shed. No. Yes, yep. the hazard shed. Second. Voice vote, Larry. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. And I'm an aye. All right. Um, so this is probably one of the most simple um, administrative changes I've dealt with, but um, just for this, it was brought to my attention. And so I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Um, Hickory Ridge, uh, they're finalizing their easement documents for utility access. And in the course of doing so, 
you'll see the approved plan on the right hand side, which shows the utility corridor going to the right of the access road and as they are actually mapping it out in the field they're realizing they have to go on the left hand side of the access road, uh, which is west the west side so. Um, changing the location of the utility poles is basically all it is, but I wanted to make sure that you guys were on board with this as a minor administrative change. And if you are, then we would just need a motion approving this change, the minor administrative change to the order of conditions. I see no trouble with that. Uh, Anyone else? No problem. Is there okay. um, a timeline for the, um, the solar installation? Um, is that, or is that kind of still a black I hole? I think it goes after acquisition, but I would defer to okay. Dave on that. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it's a great question. I was just reviewing the conservation management plan yesterday, which is a pretty massive document with lots of attachments. Um, I I do not see much happening. I think until probably fall of twenty two. And the reason for that is I think they have to do most of the work during a period when wood turtles are not as active. Um, so I would think fall of 22 might be the first time we, um, you know, I'm not 100% sure on that, but reading the CMP, I think that's that's what I, I, I gathered from it. So I, I think October, they say, October to April, I think is it. Yeah, is October a good 15th. Time. Yeah, October to April, October fifteenth ish to uh, April first is is an inactive time for wood turtles. Cool. So do we have to make a motion for this? Yeah. Yes, please. I'll make a motion to our minor administrator change to the order of conditions at Hickory Ridge to move the utility poles from the right hand side to the left hand side of the access road. Second. Voice vote. Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. Roy. Aye. Michelle. Aye. And I'm an I. You guys are going fast. I'm going to have a hard time pulling this up. Okay. Um, so, um, okay. Well, if we could, I'll talk about Canton Ave first because we have 15 mm -hmm. minutes and uh, uh, that's probably the biggest discussion item um, amongst these sort of behind the scene projects. Um, so I've been having a lot of back and forth with, um, uh, Pete Wilson, uh, regarding, I'm just going to stop sharing for a second so I can see your faces. Um, a lot of back and forth discussion with Pete Wilson regarding, um, the status of the enforcement order, how he can complete and resolve the enforcement order. So that's kind of piece number one. Um, and the way that I've interpreted where we stand with that, uh, let me know if I'm off base, anybody who's recoll recollecting the situation is, um, Ward Smith remapped the wetlands based on uh, their location in the field. And once they were flagged in the field and we knew that that wetland had expanded approximately six, 60 feet, um, the commission identified the fact that the plans needed to be revised. And so we had a plan revision submitted to us from Bucky Sparkle. However, the plan revision from Bucky Sparkle didn't include the stormwater, which there had been a stormwater basin that had been on the plan set on the original approved order of conditions. So the commission asked then for the plan to be revised a second time to include the stormwater and the house because the first time around just the house was included. They are not going to get um, an engineer to be able to revise the plan to include stormwater until March of 2022. So that's kind of in a holding pattern until the plan can be revised by the engineer. So there's that piece. Then I was asked basically for a pre-construction meeting on the other lot so they could go in there and start clearing the trees on the other lot. And I didn't even know sort of where to go with that because there's the outstanding enforcement issue on the order of conditions. And so I wanted to get a read from you guys as to my advice to them was, I think that you're going to have to wait until you resolve the enforcement, but I wanted to get a read from you guys on that. And the only note on that is that the two sites are the same project. So they're the same permit. 
same so permit. Not a separate permit. Yeah. So yep. my, how, my two how long seven. has this been ongoing? The enforcement issue? Since they permit they tried to permit. I believe that the enforcement okay. so the 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 violation happened in the fall of 2019 and it was discovered in I want to say the summer of 2020 we discovered it and issued an enforcement order so we've been trying to resolve the enforcement order since summer of 2020. Okay. And what was the date that the permit expires Aaron you knew it. Early. Oh so this is the thing we just worked out and this is the state um, created this this tolling tolling period for permits and so based on that incorporating the extension of the permit that would the state granted through that um, emergency legislation it would be I want to say it's June 22nd 2022 so they've got to do the this thing in March and then come back to us well so here's the other the other complicated piece of this um, so their permits due to expire in June, we're not going to be getting a revision from them at least until March, but we know that they're, they're not just going to be able to do this as a minor administrative change to the order of conditions. It, they're going to come back, the wetland has dramatically changed and they're going to have to dramatically change their design. And so from where I sit, it's either going to be a new notice of intent when that, when that plan set comes through or an amendment to the existing permit. So regard you know that there's going to be a change to the permit regardless of that um, expiration date and the commission will have to make that decision once the plan design comes through how to handle it and they, you said they, they want to clear the get started on the next lot isn't it don't you have to isn't there a, a crossing to get to all of it yeah. yeah. So my two cents on this, I was going to say, is that we should not permit moving forward with a second lot, giving, given a, an active enforce, enforcement order and permit conditions that are like basically in flux. Um, our job is to protect that wetland. And if we don't know what the wetland looks like right now, it's hard to be sure that that we could be protecting the resource on the second lot now. Um, but I'm open to discussion if people think that that's for some reason unreasonable. Um, I'm on your side, Jen, but with a different reason. I just, if it's definitely the same permit, I, and there's currently enforcement against it, I don't see why it's even a question. Yeah, okay. Agreed. Okay, Fletcher. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's it's the same permit. I totally. Okay. And there's, yeah. It, Great. So, if it if the permit goes out at June in June, say that. Can you run that by again? You said some if it can't expire, but they can amend it. They can. So they could file to amend the order of conditions if the commission felt that um, that was an okay thing to do. Um, and that would mean they'd have to re-notify about it's i mean an amendment is very similar to um a filing a new notice of intent altogether the difference is that you can carry forward the dep file number so they could potentially keep their old dep file number and once the amendment is issued sometimes with amendments they so like let's say within six months to a year of um, it getting their order of conditions, they file an amendment. Sometimes the commission will say your expiration date is the same as your original permit, um, just to keep them on a tight track. But other times when the amendment is issued, they can give them a three year window to complete the work. So but that's kind of not on the table yet. Right. 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 They'll have to have a revised plan set for that, even to that decision point to even come in front of us. Just to be clear. So what, yeah, are we, the, what are we looking for? I mean, it sounds like we're. we're the, I think we're, we're just saying no to the pre-construction. Yeah. Yeah. I just need so to we're just clarifying for Aaron what our position is on, or what our 
understanding is of the regulations for how to move forward. Yep. Okay, so um, until they've resolved the enforcement, there won't be a pre-construction meeting for work on the other lot. Exactly. Okay. Well, that was easier than I thought it would be <laughs> to sort out. Well, I mean, um, they have to like, since the wetlands moved, yeah, they have to give us all new everything. I mean, the whole, the whole, specifically the storm water drainage issue. Right. It's because all different from the last permit. I mean, the, this permit. Right. Right. The and, detention basin was proposed basically exactly where the wetland has expanded to. So mm -hmm. they all, they'll have to find a new location for their detention basin. That's pretty tight in there. It's pretty okay. major. Yeah. It's very tight. Very tight. Yeah. It's, it's not trivial. No. Hmm. Um, Okay, so quick update, um, 1107 North Pleasant Street. Um, I did send a letter to the owner and I finally was able to make phone contact with the owner of record that we had on file. And I found out that the property was actually sold in late 2021. And then I contacted the assessor's office and got the new ownership information and have now sent a letter to the new owners. Um, there was no phone number available for the new owners. So um, they were sent a certified letter, um, basically notifying them that the um, trees were cut um, in violation and that they need to file a request for determination. And that was based on um, the commission's discussion at the last meeting. I'm just gonna pull up photos. So those of you who have not seen it can see what the cutting looks like along this little intermittent stream. And, and there is some cut, some clearing in the back as well. So um, I'm waiting to hear back from them. I basically asked them to get in touch with me immediately, told them to cease and desist with cutting and that they needed to file a permit for the work. Based think, on uh, the go ahead, Michelle. Oh, um, just based on the timeline, do we think it's the new owners or the old owners that did the cutting? It was the, it's the new owners. Um, I spoke with the old owner and he said he had no knowledge of, um, of the cutting taking place that it had happened after the property had been transferred. Aaron, I haven't been to the site, but uh, is there any, uh, any brush or any wood, and anything left? Or did they take it away? Mm -mm. No, and there's been a little bit of scuttlebutt as far as like who was responsible for the cutting because, mm -hmm. you know, it seems like any landscaping company in town would have known better than to do that. And so that's one of the things I'd like to get confirmation of once we reach the owners is who did this job and we need to be in contact with them. Um I know with enforcement situations that sometimes contractors can get pulled into those, but more so just to say you guys should know better. And if this happens again, that we're paying attention to the jobs that you're doing. Um, if it is who I think it is, this has happened before. So um, anyway, we will cross that bridge when we come to it. I love that there's so many wetland puns out there. Uh, anyways, um, Southeast Commons is moving forward. We've been getting inspection reports. Um, I did go out and inspect a dewatering area, although it was pretty um, cold. I Forgive me for sharing and then stopping. I'm just switching back and forth between my photos um, so you guys can see what the site actually looked like. Um, very snowy when I was out there, but um, so far they've been very good about keeping me informed. Um, the communication has been really good on the site. This is the dewatering basin, which looked good. My only concern about it was its proximity to the wetland. Usually I would ask that it be a little further away, but this is where they placed it. So basically they were advised that um, it's fine, but if that, if that dewatering area over tops at any point that they're going to have to um, cease pumping into it until the water infiltrates. It's going to be an interesting one. 
It is going to be a very interesting one because it's a very wet site. I mean, right now it's, it's just water tables right there. Yeah. yeah. You say Southeast Commons. Isn't that up by Route 9? Am I thinking in the wrong place? It's right behind Florence Savings Bank. Yeah, um, that's, that's not Southeast Commons. That's why I was confused. Southeast Commons, isn't that way down by, by uh, Pomeroy? No. Is this the East where, like, Harvey this lives or something? Yeah, is this the East Street Commons? It's on it's Southeast like, Street. I, I know, but I thought it was the East Street. That's on the Common Commons. by Station Road. And, um, yeah, that's the one I think of as the Southeast Commons. Southeast Street. Oh. The Street. But that's, yeah. that's the Southeast Commons. This, I think, is the East Street Commons. Yeah, that's this is right important. behind Florence Bank. Yeah, that's, I, I, just, I was concerned because I thought it was farther south, and I thought I knew where it was, and I didn't know where it was. Okay. So what do we actually call the area near Harvey's house? I thought that was like kind of South Amherst Center. Yeah. I was called to the Southeast Commons. I was South called it Amherst. South Amherst Commons. South Amherst Commons. Yeah. Um, South Amherst Dave. Commons. Okay. Well, oh, thank you, Jerry. Oh, 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 I'm finally catching on to what Larry's. Yeah. Fourth of July. Yeah. Day. Common, South, Amherst. The South Amherst Common. Yeah. Versus Southeast Commons. Yeah. Got it. I don't know okay. if that's. <laughs> I think it's actually Fiddler, Fiddler Green or something. Fiddler Green, that that's that was named after the. Oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah. You're right. Of course, right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. I've lived, I've lived this town too long. <laughs> so so how does this dewatering work? So they put this basin in. They're pumping water into it. it has to filter it. it helps to filter. Mm -hmm. But that's where the 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 structure is going in that place, right? eventually yeah so they're going like to be it's going to get covered over like they're just it's just i mean i understand yeah. how it works i do know they'll how get it works, the drainage but I'm just like... for the they'll get the drainage and the stormwater all the site all yeah. did, the drainage for the stormwater it's management tricky. all worked out and then they'll fill back right. in now yeah. i know i'm really curious to see how it is so those plans are really funky the way they um did that stormwater drainage yeah you know, it's you know elevated what it's everything it's going to be a lot like the site over um, you drive south yeah. where they built it up really high. Um, right. They'll it'll be they'll they'll dewater the foundation footings to get the, the initial foundation footings in. And then once the initial foundation footings in, they're going to be bringing in a lot of fill and then they'll right. be doing more foundation work, raising right. it up. I think that the issue there was that they have to put the foundation footings very deep down because um, the geotechnical issues on the site probably pertaining to the water table because it's so high. They're going to have some flooded basements. <laughs> well, not if they do the drainage, right? Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it, either that or it's going to just be dumping a lot of water Into off site. The into the road or in the stormwater drainage yeah right right wetland, yeah um okay so the last little thing i just wanted to make you guys aware of um there i was contacted about lot 57 concord way um and i was out there uh with um anna from integrity builders um and we took a measurement actually on that specific lot it in the original um order of conditions it was outside of jurisdiction and um we recently approved the tofino um boundary changes for lots uh five through eight and just wanted to confirm that with the changes in the boundary that um that lot 57 was still outside of conservation commission jurisdiction. So I went out there today with her with a measuring tape and did that. I just want to be very um, communicative with you guys about that particular location because there's there are lots on that subdivision where um, orders of, you know, they still need to file notices of intent for individual building lots, but that's just not one of them. So I just wanted to make sure I was clear on that. Great. Are there like a number of lots still available in there to be built around? Mm -hmm. Besides all the ones we were we've been dealing with, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, there's a there's a couple um, 
more on like the end of Linden Ridge. There's like a um, cul-de-sac down there. And then there are these lots five through eight, which we approved, which of those mm-hmm. ones are very tight orders of conditions. <laughs> They're going to have a lot of monitoring and stuff to be done as part of those construction of those houses. And then lots one and two, actually, um, Ted Parker never came back with with a permit. So um, after a period of time, I mean, I kind of have already sort of considered that to be those to be that he's going to have to refile for those if he comes back for anything. But yeah, there's a there's a lot of house lots there. So there's a couple lots that they've been filling in to try to bring up the grade. Oh yeah. They aren't where their wetlands are. They're just they're they're inside another road, but they drop okay. off the road quite a bit and they're trying to build them up so they can bring the house up to a level. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, that's okay. all I have for other business, and we're right on time here. A little five, five minutes late. Okay. Do you want to do the certificates of, should we, are there two certificates of compliance? Um, there, there is one certificate of compliance. Oh, and thank you for reminding me about that because somehow it didn't make it into my PowerPoint. Um, it actually was for um, 15 uh, Alyssum Drive and I did go out there and have a look at it. Um, the site is nowhere near any wetlands. It was uh, a holdover from the Amherst Woods um, uh, order of conditions, which was from like the early nineties. And they've been, the attorneys have been trying to clean up, um, all those lots out there. So there was no issues. It's an upland site, totally stable. They're doing a refinance. And so they're just taking care of it. So I would be in favor of issuing a complete certificate of compliance for 15 Alyssum drive. If somebody wants to make that motion. I'll make a motion for 15 Alyssum drive to certify a Certificate of compliance. Certificate of compliance. Seconded. All right, voice vote. Fletcher. Aye. Larry. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Roy. Aye. I'm an aye. Okay, so that's everything except our hearing that we were running five minutes late. So I see Paul, who I'm assuming <laughs> I could bring in, promote to two panelists. Um, what happened? Oh, there he is. Oh, good. Paul, we see that you're in the meeting, but we can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, hello, welcome. Thank hello. you for being here. Um, so let me just open this hearing since it's a new permit filing. Yay. Um, this public hearing is now called to order. This hearing is being held as required by the provisions of chapter 131, section 40 of the general laws of the Commonwealth and act relative to the protection of wetlands as most recently amended and article 3.31 wetlands protection under the town of Amherst general bylaws. Fletcher, remember how Bryony had that memorized? Yeah. That was... will never happen. <laughs> Um, Paul, thank you for being here. So um, it sounds like we're here for a discussion of, I'm just going to make sure I get the project name right, um, Town of Amherst DPW for roadway and drainage improvements and rehab and improvements to a footpath bike path on Mill Lane. So I understand this connects South Pleasant to Groff Park. Yes. Um, do you just want to briefly introduce yourself and then give us an overview of the sure. proposed project? Sure. Uh, my, my name is Paul Bethier. Um, I work at the Amherst DPW in the engineering department. Um, and actually, is it possible for me to share my screen? Yeah, yes. it should be. Okay. If you, yep, if you go down to the bottom of the Zoom window, you should see a green button that says share screen. Yeah. Okay. okay. Does that work for people? Can you see it? Yep. Okay. Um, well, I guess I'd, I'd like to begin with just a little history on, on this project in this area. Uh, back in 2017, uh, the town began designing a multi-use path that was going to extend from the Amherst Hadley town line on East Hadley Road and eventually end up at Groff Park. Um, so we basically 
the design of that path was the intent was then to um, follow the town's complete street policy and provide um, a network along East Hadley Road to Groff Park. And that included road widening, uh, the addition of bike lanes, improvements to crosswalks and, and handicap ramps, and also the addition of bus stops. Um, so the portion of the path from Hadley to West, the West Street intersection here at East Hadley Road was completed in 2020. So the project that's being proposed tonight actually can, is basically the extension from East Hadley Road to Groff Park, which is shown in actually the yellow, this section right here, if you can see the cursor. Yeah. Um, and what we want to do with this design is actually, um, we want to leave ourselves opportunities to extend a future path to the north to go to the Nowatic uh, Rail Trail. And then also down here, leave us a uh, connection south down to um, Pomeroy Village. And then at Croft Park, we wanted to leave an area so we could continue a sidewalk to the playground and then a possible long time future plan for another path um, on Mill Lane. Um, so, so that's kind of the overall project. It's just this portion in yellow that we're talking about tonight. Um, let me change to the overall plan here. Um, so on this plan, I just wanted to point out, we, we did actually have uh, Beth Wilson from our department go out and delineate the wetlands. Um, she actually did the mean annual high water mark here on the Fort River on this side and a little bit on the other side. Um, so using that, we, uh, we actually put in our 100 foot riparian zone which is the red line and then also the 200 foot. And on the south side, this is the 100 and this is the 200. Um, she also uh, delineated a, a BVW in this hatched area here. And then the green dash line is the 100 foot buffer zone for that. Uh, and then the dashed blue line is the 100 year floodplain line, which runs along here. Um, so again, it, is everybody able to see that or yep. is it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Um, so so for this section that we did on East Hadley Road, uh, we actually had a 10 foot wide multi-use path. Um, but for this section, what we tried to do is adjust the width of the path based on a lot of the resource areas and the impacts that we have. Um, so the project kind of begins at the, this, this ramp was revised when we did the other project in 2020. So the project actually begins on the north side of the intersection where we would redo these handicap ramps uh, and realign this crosswalk across West Street. And then, uh, we would propose a 10 foot multi-use path down to the existing pedestrian bridge. And we would stop at the bridge. Uh, we're not proposing any work on the bridge itself, um, but the work would then start up again on the south side of the bridge. Uh, and the sidewalk would run through an easement that the town has out to Mill Lane. And then it would turn uh, northeast uh, towards Groff Park. And it would be eight, eight feet wide through this section to limit the, the uh, impacts. Um, also proposed with this project is um, repaving Mill Lane from West Street, which this would be the match line right here. And that would extend all the way up to just past the entrance of Groff Park. Um, and also in this project, what we would do is look at the existing drainage for Mill Lane. And when we redo the road, we would have to rebuild some of the structures, adjust the rim elevations um, back up to grade. So let me just look through my notes here and see if I just missed anything. 
Yeah, so the, the roadway elevation in this area is, is basically 15 to 20 feet above the water elevation of the Fort River. So the 100 year flood line is actually on the bank of the Fort River. It doesn't appear to ever come up into our project site where we're doing the work um, because this dashed line would be our um, straw wattles or our um, silt sock. Um, so the site was mapped as priority and es estimated habitat for rare and endangered species. Um, we, we did fill out the MISA application and, and got the letter back. And I think that was included in the NOI submission. Um, the soils on the site are really not that great. They're hydrologic group C soils. So that does kind of limit what we can do in terms of proposing any infiltration on this site. And we're also very limited to the space that we have to work with because we're pretty much within the right of way and then it's just surrounded by residential properties. So we did, when we were working on the design, we did actually try to limit our disturbance. We looked at reducing the width of the path from 10 to eight feet. Um, we also looked at the existing pavement width of Mill Lane. And in some areas, uh, we're actually reducing it from 28 feet down to 24 feet wide. So we can eliminate some of the impervious surface. Um, we still end up with a, with a, a net gain in impervious surface when we're done because we're, we're widening the path, but we did make attempts to limit that amount. Um, we're also proposing to eliminate a section of existing sidewalk that runs along here. Um, and again, just turn, turn that back to uh, grass. Um, in terms of, let's see, one other item that we're at that we'd like to add in. Uh, so the path, again, it, 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 we're proposing a crosswalk here. So to make a connection to the south side of Mill Lane, and then the proposed path will, will run along the edge of the pavement. Then it will turn north and actually run at the same location where the existing sidewalk is. So we're trying to limit disturbance by just taking up the old sidewalk, doing a little widening, three feet, and then putting in the new multi-use path. Um, we're also proposing a, a overlook in a level area near the river. Um, and that would be a stone dust area with, with a couple benches and plantings around it. Um, and again, the path would extend up to the entrance of Groff Park. Um, we're also proposing with this project to install two stormwater treatment chambers. Um, and the first one would be installed on an existing pipe at the entrance of Groff Park. And that would actually take all the runoff that comes from the east down Mill Lane, and it would run through this new treatment chamber and then discharge through an existing pipe into the Fort River down in this area. Um, the second one would actually go down here. Uh, so all of Mill Lane uh, basically flows from Groff Park down towards the low point down here. Uh, and then this would be installed on the ex existing pipe and that discharges south into a um, small stream that flows into the Fort River. And again, this, this project is being proposed as a limited project and redevelopment. And I think that pretty much sums it up um, if you have any questions or if there's anything I can clarify. Yeah, that's, that's great. Thanks, Paul. So I think the next move is, I know, Aaron, you guys did a site visit, so we should get a report out for you. But just before we go into that, can you just tell me what is the additional square footage of impervious inside the 100 foot? Do you know the actual square footage, Paul? Um, I actually figured it out for inside the 200. Okay. I, I didn't. I didn't figure it out separately. Okay, that's fine. Uh, um, so we had. Uh, let's 
So it's uh, 12,066 square feet of the total work area within the 200. And the impervious uh, is 0. 0.051 acres increase. Wait, oh, so that, what does that work out to? Is that the 2,200 square feet? Is yeah, yep, twenty two hundred square yeah, feet. Yeah, uh, okay. two thousand two hundred twenty one square feet of, imp of additional, additional impervious, impervious okay. area. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, yeah. So, commissioners, we'll come back to questions for Paul if if it's okay with you guys. I just want to see photos from the site visit and any notes. Any I don't. Who was at the site visit this morning? Just you, Aaron. Yeah, it was just me. Okay. Yeah. You want to just give us a little tour? Yeah, sure. Um, so this is starting at Groff Park and then um, moving west along the river. This is the uh, proximate location um, sort of behind this little stump. Um, that's the approximate location of where the look off would be. That is another view of it. And that's Paul sort of standing uh, where the look off would be. Um, across the street, this is showing that this is the sidewalk that's proposed to be removed. And then this is a shot of the um, area that goes across in front of the old gristmill building and the pedestrian bridge over the Fur River. And of both ways, um, the location of where the existing um, sidewalk is, and then it would be actually brought around between the um, the signal and the uh, um, hydrant there for the for the um, change. And then this is just a shot down to the river, shot across South Pleasant Street. Um, so this is difficult to see, but this is actually the outlet of the existing stormwater structure into the Fort River. And this is kind of back more towards um, Groff Park, the Gro Gro where Groff Park comes off of Mill Lane. If you look down towards the river, you can see it. And you can see there's actually a pipe sort of floating in the middle of that little um, uh, washout area. So this, the uh, stormwater outlet has scoured away this, this area um, on the bank and uh, portion of the pipe disconnected and so it's just sort of floating there um, and so that's where the outlet is located um, not sure if you guys want to do questions for Paul first how or if you want me to kind of go into what my review was yeah so why don't does anyone have any questions based on Paul's presentation before we lose that detail just real quick about the um, the viewing platform to the river doesn't you don't have anything uh no vegetate are you planning on clearing vegetation for a, a better view of the river uh no we weren't planning on it it's actually a um just a, a fairly level grass area um so we wouldn't right. be into any of the vegetation uh, uh, yeah the vegetation on the bank i'm saying correct yeah for a view because like in the summer you're not going to see anything because there's going to be leaf leaf out on the river on, on the trees on the bank so I was just curious if you had anything um yeah we had trees for review we hadn't really talked about that I was under the assumption that we weren't going to do that um, but that may be a question for Dave Zomack also and then just a quick follow-up with that I'm assuming that might be part of the reason why you want to have the sidewalk on that side um, rather than have the sidewalk on the uh, what's that the north side? Well, south, sorry, side. south side, south, south side, south side, south yeah, side. If, if um, actually, if we put the sidewalk on the south side, we end up mm -hmm. doing more grading and earthwork. Okay. Uh, and if we put it on the north side, all we're doing is taking up an existing sidewalk and just widening it a little bit towards the road. Gotcha. So it also adds two crossings, pretty much, right? Because you'd have to get yes. Yes, cross, it would. And then down the side and then cross back. Yes. Good for me at the moment. 
Anyone else? Okay, Erin, do you want to give us your guidance on this? Sure. Um, so, I mean, I think that it's a great project. Um, I think they did a great job with the design, and I think there's a lot of improvements that are associated with this that'll overall be beneficial. Um, the, the application was filed under a limited project. Limited projects are reserved for situations where um, design constraints can't meet the regulations. Um, having looked at and crunched all of Paul's numbers with regard to um, existing impervious versus proposed impervious, the only parcel that really I was at all concerned about was, um, and I'm not sure if you guys can see this map image. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. Okay. The only parcel that I was even remotely concerned about because of the amount of alteration was um, the one basically that the viewing platform is on. It's this long skinny piece. Um, you can see the existing sidewalk in red versus the proposed sidewalk. And this is not exact by any case. This is just my um, estimation. I geo geocoded the, um, the PDF plan and then digitized it so that we could see. And then the hundred foot inner riparian line is located this dashed line so you can see all of that work is located within 100 feet um, and so that's really sort of the biggest area of concern for me um, under the regulations for riverfront um, so and so this is looking at compliance with the regulations because you know just to give you a sense of what the regulations require um, alteration the commission Within the commission's discretion, you guys can allow alteration of 5,000 square feet or 10% um, under the riverfront regulations on a lot created prior to August 6, 1996, provided that the work is in the outer riparian um, with a 100 foot wide area of undisturbed vegetation. So this lot is um, about 20,500 square feet. It's owned by the recreation department. The current alteration on the lot is approximately 1,650 square feet or about 8% of the lot. Proposed alteration, um, this is if you include the existing and then add the additional um, impervious that's being proposed, it will put it at about 3,136 square feet. Again, this is approximate and bring the alteration on the lot to about 15.3%. So again, it's under 5,000 square feet, but it's over that 10% threshold. Um, the, um, all of the work in that area would be within the inner riparian zone. So um, exceeding the 10% and it's within the inner riparian. You guys have the discretion to approve this as a limited project and allow that to happen. Um, Dave and I had discussed the possibility of doing a small 1500 foot, 1500 square foot mitigation area in Groff Park. Um, anybody who's familiar with Groff Park, you know that long grassy strip that runs along the river sort of in the lower plateau below the parking area. And if you go um, all the way south on that little uh, grassy area it's um you know it starts to get kind of um, mucky down there and um, not the grass you know it's kind of spotty grassy um, lots of roots and stuff so it seemed like a logical place to do a restoration um, that's an option for the board to consider um, generally speaking the project is removing excess impervious within the um uh, they've made an effort to remove excess impervious by removing portions of sidewalk um, to try to, you know, comply with the regulations, which I think was a great thing. And there are stormwater improvements being made um, with the project in the form of replacement of catch basins and the um, placement of storm scepters to do some additional TSS removal. So, um, that being said, it's really discretionary for you guys. And, um, uh, that's basically what my recommendation is. I do have a draft motion here for you. Um, most of it is pretty standard. I think that the, the one final condition and Paul and I had talked about this in the field or um, on the phone maybe was um, on the private um, property 
um, because they're being pretty significantly impacted by this work. Um, they are, the DPW is, I guess, going to be doing a little bit of um, helping, oh gosh, sorry, this is really difficult to navigate. Um, they're going to be doing some work to, to grade the private driveway, um, you know, it, uh, because it's rutted and whatever, just to, to offer them sort of something in return for this work that's impacting them. And so um, my comment or condition um, was um, that the 100 year flood zone elevation should be field surveyed and identified in the field prior to that driveway work being done just so that no fill can be placed within the flood elevation. And those are my comments. Okay. Thanks, Erin, and thanks, Paul. Um, just a really small thing. On that private lot that's to the north, that's like, you know, to the north side of where the trail will go between the old grass mill and the, like, parking area, we had gone through this whole thing. They replaced their fence a couple of years ago, and we went through, a, I think they almost, I think they filed a permit for it, and we had a clearance off the ground because we were worried about um, critters being able to get from the Fort River to wherever upland site. Um, so just uh, keep that in mind if any fencing has to come down temporarily, like that actual clearance of the fence off the property was something that we like put a lot of work into. I'm sure the landowners will remember this, but um, that was a thing. Fletcher, maybe you remember that. Um, so back to this <laughs> project. So I think this is great. I, <clears throat> at first looking at it, I was kind of like, why are we putting a viewing platform there? It's like kind of a funny spot when people are going to be traveling on this, along this with like right now, the ultimate destination of Groff Park. Um, why would they stop there? You know, like when there's this really nice pavilion at Groff Park, et cetera. And then I was worried, like I looking at just the the topo I was worried that it was going to be kind of too close to like what's a pretty steep bank so if there was any vegetation clearing I was worried about bank stability there for the Fort River um it's such a like kind of abuse a little bit you know it gets a lot of flashy flows in there so I worry about kind of how that creek is down is incising and banks are getting steeper and undercut so I just worry about bank stability along the Fort River there um but that said, I don't think like given now that I've seen the existing condition of where the viewing platform will go, I don't know that it's going to really make a difference. Um, so I guess I'm kind of, and I also think like the proposed stormwater improvements and overall improvement to like the sidewalk and, you know, water set stormwater quality management as a result of this project is great. So I'm kind of split, I guess. Um, so commissioners, do you have any um, input on this or would you mind stopping sharing Aaron? So I can of course, it? absolutely. Yeah. No, Thanks. sorry. Thank you for, <laughs> yeah. I like to look at people's faces. When we're yeah. Talking. So I don't know, Lori, you look like you have some input. Um. Yeah, overall, I'm totally with you, Jen. I love this project, so I'm definitely down to approve it. I guess uh, this might be a question for Paul or maybe even Dave. Uh, uh, to Fletcher's point, in most of the year, you won't be able to see the river. I don't know how much we need this viewing platform at all. And I'm wondering, I know that there's a lot of time put into these plans, but I'm wondering if we could get rid of that. I mean, it would save us a ton of impervious it uh, doesn't seem to be gaining much. It is a short distance to Jen's point. So how many people are really going to use it? I don't know. I just would like to hear some thoughts from either Paul or Dave on it. I'll, I'll probably let Dave answer that unless you would like me to answer. Um, yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great point. Um, you know, and, and, and I think it's kind of a, it's kind of a toss up so often, um, you know, you do, you, you get projects, not in Amherst, but in other places we've all visited where people actually clear the trees so that you get a view of the river or the pond or the lake. Um, 
And I think I, I can go either way on it. I, I appreciate that Paul and others put a great deal of time into the into the design of, of uh, the whole sidewalk. You know, I will say that, you know, for instance, I do use the um, Conti Refuge Trail quite a bit in Hadley um, with, with relatives um, and, and friends. And, you know, once, once the leaves, either before leaf out or after the leaves have fallen, you get nice views of the Fort River. So it's not like we wouldn't be able to see the Fort River there. Um, the flip side of that is you can just go up to Guelph Park, Park go down the hill, and you've got hundreds of, actually thousands of feet of, of frontage and viewing because you can take the Emily Dickinson Trail and see all you want to the Fort River. So, um, but again, for some people, they may not do that. They just aren't comfortable because of ticks, poison ivy, or have uh, mobility challenges. So that's, I think, why we proposed it up there. So yeah, but the mo mobility side, what, one of the things I was concerned when I looked at that is, hopefully people aren't going to park there and go over and do it. Mm. You know that they might they could park along Mill Lane and then walk over to that. That's what Groff Park is for. Mm. So I could I could go either way. I, I see the arguments for reducing impervious, as Leroy mentioned, and others. So, Paul, I, I think are you kind of in 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 the similar uh, place? Um, yeah, it it honestly doesn't matter to me. It is you know it is ADA accessible. Mm. Um, but again, it's up to other people. I was trying to think back if I had a photo that was taken during the summer. Can we um, see that picture now. that we do have, just for reference? Yeah, could you put up the like, one from today with Paul in it, Aaron? Yes, I'll cue that up. Give me just one sec. I'm going to look for the other one also. I don't necessarily think the view would be completely obstructed because there's not I don't know, the rest of that riverfront, there's not a ton of thick understory all the time. I've walked like the Emily, it's the Emily Dickinson mm, Trail all the way yeah. down that way. Yeah. This is downstream of the Emily Dickinson Trail though, Michelle, this is like, right. so the Emily Dickinson, okay, yeah. where we are. I know, I know, it's not, okay. um, I don't know, there's a lot of like shade and like probably honeysuckle, which isn't yeah. too thick. I don't know, it's... I'm thinking maybe bikers, especially if it ever gets connected to um, the rail trail, might use it instead of being at like the craziness of the family park. Yeah, that's what I was. Envisioning. Stay away from the kids. <laughs> yeah, it might be like a nice mellow enclave, um, an adult viewing area. As opposed <laughs> yeah, to... <laughs> right, right. Got better put a recycling bin in all those beer cans then. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind it. it I mean, it, it, having that viewing shed is probably. I didn't mean to cut you off, Michelle. Sorry. No, I was just making, you know, a pitch for the butte, like, you know, just throwing it out there. Not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so view... go ahead, Fletcher. I was just saying having a viewing shed is probably better than having turf. Yeah. Just mowing it. Yeah. I mean, so, and I don't know about that's... grade grading impacts, but the, the square footage of the viewing platform itself and I don't know what you came out with, um, Paul, but I came out with like 350 square feet. Like it's not very big. Right. And actually calculate it, but that sounds, it's probably about right. I mean, you might as well just go all, go all in and do what they did in Sunderland on the Connecticut River. Do you see that? Have you guys seen that right on the, um, mm. the, the viewing one on, right on the river at the Sunderland Bridge where the boat launch is? Yes, I've seen Take that. Take all the trees out and have a perfect view, but we're not there. Oh. So I shouldn't say that. Um, anyway, I think this is probably a viewing shed actually here. It's something for people to have a little bit of respite, have a place to hang out rather than hanging out at Groff Park. Yeah. Not a bad idea. I just, I don't know. Can I, we think do, I don't know. Can we, Larry, maybe, do can have... that, maybe can that uh, restoration area be in this area too or something? I don't know. We can like yeah, was there plantings on the plan? Did I see that? Like shrub plantings around on the sides or? Yes. Let me see. That's an interesting idea. Combine the restoration area with the viewing platform. So you have like thoughtful native plantings kind of around low lying. With more sun than it would be in that little enclave and yeah. like more PR for the plants. 
Yeah. Essentially little signs. Learning opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It would require maintenance, but. I, I will, if I could chime in, I mean, if the commission were moving toward a restoration area, I think what we were in, in our brief conversation that Aaron and I had, what we were trying to do down below was twofold really was create an area that is essentially naturally restored simply by not mowing it any longer. So, and, and trying to get that benefit down closest to the stream where, you know, more mowing, more trimming, more uh, raking and leaf uh, uh, deposition from, you know, uh, uh, leaf blowing really isn't great and, and it, for, the, for the river and the riverfront, but also, you know, a small restoration area there, small as it is, would cut down on the amount of, A, fossil fuels that DPW has to use to mow it and blow it and, and trim it, and also, you know, um, would just restore some of that, that habitat down there closest to the river where wood turtles do their thing and, and all of that. I, I'm a little hesitant to add more work for DPW up here um, in terms of gardens and weeding and mulching or anything of that sort. So I'm, I'm just putting it out that that out there. So hard tell and not knowing, but if the if the multi-use path were to continue to Groff Park, would it then be adjacent to what we're now proposing as a restoration area? In which case, would be kind of, I don't know, what, is there a benefit there in the future necessarily? I, I think there would be, Paul, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we envisioned the sidewalk on the east side of the parking lot, not the west oh, side. So yes. you would cross and then go down so, the east side. Okay. Yeah, we, would wanna, we would wanna keep the sidewalk as far away from the river and, okay. and uh, the riparian corridor as possible. Okay. Yes. So I'm getting a very mixed, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm getting what I'm giving, which is a very kind of mixed review here. I think, I feel like nobody feels super strongly either way. That makes me feel like the DPW has made a pretty good effort to mitigate stormwater in this project. It's a really well-conceived project. I'm tempted not to add in an additional restoration area. Um, I guess that's where I land based on this discussion, but steer me in another direction if you guys are feeling differently. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the right thing to do here. Um, I hear you on the on the additional protection down close to the river there, Dave, but I don't think it's, um, I think there's been a lot of effort elsewhere in the project to help improve the right. stormwater quality going to the river. So I agree I'm pretty good about that being a pretty impactful um, addition or uh, result of this project. Um, commissioners, any other questions or comments? I think those boilerplates look great. That was going to be my other question, Aaron, just because they're so close to that steep bank during construction, making sure that we're keeping an eye on it. Anyone else? Any other questions, comments? Okay, just, oh, make, sure, make sure that we just check on public. I know that um, the owner of the uh, grist mill was there when we site did our yeah. site visit and she was going to jump on, but I don't know if she's still on. So I don't, um, I see more keen on there, um, but more raise your hand if you have a comment or question with related to this hearing or any questions in general. I don't think that's the landowner there. Okay. Okay, looks good. All right, so it sounds like we're looking for this motion, commissioners. Hard to read. Right. Oh. I move to order to issue an order of conditions for DP file number 089-0695 with our boilerplate state local conditions. Uh, well, with the following conditions. Number one, boilerplate state and local conditions. Number two, monthly erosion control monitoring reports. Number three, erosion control inspection and, start, and at the start of the project. 
Uh, number four, stabilization with mulch A and C on all exposed areas until vegetation is established. Number five, final inspection prior to removal of the controls. Uh, number six, 100 year flood elevation should be field surveyed prior to the field being placed uh, in the private driveway and no field can be placed within the flood elevation. Second. All right, voice vote. Michelle. Aye. Larry. Aye. Leroy. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. And I'm an aye. Thank you, Paul. I'm sorry we started five minutes late. Oh, that's all right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Good luck with the project. Looking forward to it. OK, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Who's funding that? That is being funded with CDBG funds, I believe. Yeah, I, I believe it's CDBG Community Development Block Grant funds. Cool. That's great. It's a big project. <clears throat> Can I just ask a question? This is a little late on, on this, but are there um, guidelines for like the shrub plantings that are in Amherst like project plans? Should be in the... Like that we plant native plants next to a river kind of thing. Yeah, they should be in the specs of these plans. I'm looking quickly. Michelle, are you asking? Are there standard? Um, do we? Do we? Do we? You know, I guess it's a double question. Yeah. yeah, like is there a standard, and is there um, plans for this particular project? It just didn't come up, but um, you know, there's definitely already a lot of invasives there. So I was just wondering if we're going native shrub plantings. Ooh, that's a good I point. think DBW normally does, um, but I don't know as we have approved or accepted standards. We should, um, frankly. I know. Uh, for so, yeah. Sorry, Dave, just looking at the plans, the call out, they don't have it in the specs and they don't have a planting plan in the specs for this plan set. And the call out says proposed street tree plantings to be completed by town of Amherst, proposed shrub plantings. So it doesn't give us the detail. Sorry to interrupt you, Dave. Sure. Yeah, and they're should. definitely identified as being sort of pruned species as well. Um, more like an ornamental, I think, around that little viewing platform, if that's what you're, the area we're talking about. But I'm not sure on the non-natives. Do you mind just at, following up and asking, Paul, if there's any way to have natives yeah. in there? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a, a fair a fair ask right yeah. after the hearing closes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. That's a good that's a good point, Michelle. I mean, yeah, and technically sorry, I'm a little late on it, but um, yeah, no, that's oh, I think of things at like eleven o'clock at night after these hearings. <laughs> like I have to work through this for like hours, so all still there and he's right away. Oh, Paul's. <laughs> I just promoted him back, Paul. Oh. If that's okay. You're, you're not done yet, Paul. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. Uh, I, actually, I was just listening in. Um, what, what we did was we took the set of plans and actually had the tree warden look them over. And he gave me the locations of where he would like to plant street trees. And then we also were just showing the shrub plantings in that area. But we haven't actually selected any species yet. So if the commission would like something special or any type, just let us know and we can add that into the project plans when it goes out to bid. So. Excellent. Great. Okay. Thank you, Paul. All right. Good night. See, you caught it after all, Michelle. Yeah, I'm just thinking that's, you know, probably going to be a fruiting shrub, maybe lots of winter birds like flying up and down that riparian corridor, spreading whatever we plant. So you have an opportunity to not do harm, at least. Yeah, like a cool winterberry or something, mm -hmm. the native ones. Yeah, the winter berries are so pretty this year. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they're gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. 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 So would you, would you mind following up on that Aaron? of course yeah no i'll definitely um when i send out the order of conditions i will put a note in there that specifically we've requested that the shrub plantings be native varieties awesome 
So I think that's all we had on the agenda. Yeah, I'm just giving it one quick pass. Um, I, I'm a little uh, behind on minutes because we're doing the, um, the bylaw review committee, um, which I've been meeting with uh, the town attorney to do review and then doing the review myself and then meeting with um, Michelle and Leroy. So I'm gonna try to catch up uh, before our next meeting on the last couple sets of minutes. Um, and maybe get a couple others in. We'll see. Well, I'll try to do like those like marathon, you know, approvals of the minutes where we have like five sets to do in a whack. We'll try to get it done that way. Sounds good. Yeah. And thank you guys for working on the bylaws. Yeah. That's you. Yeah. That's, it's, it's going to be a tremendous improvement. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Looking low, they're looking already the first 10 pages, just looking good. So. As, as a point, looking back at the pictures from there on the uh, the river, Fort River, what's going to happen to that fence that's in there? It seems to me when I look at your pictures that there's a fence that goes along next to the road. Now, is that fence going to stay there? Well, I'm looking at picture number. That's, so that's private land. That, yeah, that's private property. That's, that's, that's the fence I was talking about that we permitted. That's, that's, what, I, that's what I thought. But th- isn't, yeah. that, isn't that also close to where the area where the, where the cutoff is, where the walking area, where the uh, sitting area is? Um, so, so, Larry, there, um, there was a couple things. So they're actually making the road. Um, I'm just going to share this screen real quick because it's kind of a good view. Um, give me just one sec. Um, they're they're reducing the width of the roadway here so they're reducing the width and then that will give room to widen out that um the uh sidewalk and the sidewalk is actually going to be on the south side of that pole so it's not going to impact the um the fence i don't like like jen said they might take it out um during construction but i i mean uh, I think everything is going to be, they're not taking the poles out. I know that because I asked that question. The utility poles are staying uh, staying as is where they're located. So I don't think they're going to need to take the fence out. Okay. And that's all I have for you this evening. I think that's a wrap. So you're looking for a move to adjourn. So move. That's it. <laughs> Second. All right. Voice vote. Fletcher. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Roy. Aye. Larry. Aye. I'm an eye. Great job, team. Good night. Nice job.